The tiny nation between Romania and Ukraine wants to join the European Union and regain control of its Kremlin-backed Transnistria region. Kiev's triumph could advance both aims. Russia's war in Ukraine offers Moldova new risks and opportunities. The fate of the breakaway Kremlin-backed Transnistria region is in play. Moscow's success in war could halt Moldova's Western integration. In June, amid the war in Ukraine, the European Union offered Moldova candidate status for membership in the 27-nation bloc. This was a big step with a hazy outlook. The former Soviet Republic had long been kept off the list of applicants for good reasons, including endemic corruption and a frozen conflict in its Transnistria region. The obstacle of corruption could have been overcome, much as similar concerns were overlooked when Bulgaria and Romania were admitted to the EU. But the frozen conflict, involving the long-standing presence of Russian troops, is a different matter. The decision to grant Moldova candidate status came as part of the same offer to Ukraine, which in turn was an attempt to provide security guarantees without a military component. The moral support in giving these two nations the prospect of joining the EU is important. But the move does take the question of enlargement into uncharted waters. NATO has a general rule against accepting new members that have foreign military bases on their territory. If Brussels is now intent on opening negotiations with Kiev and Chisinau on membership, it will have to factor in the possibility that both countries will have Russian troops on their territories, perhaps for the foreseeable future. Moldova, with less than 3 million people, encapsulates this problem in a more manageable size and location than Ukraine, with more than 40 million people. The Soviet Union annexed the present-day territory of Moldova from Romania in 1940 and then constituted it as the Moldavian Soviet Socialist Republic. When the USSR broke up, it followed the other 14 Soviet republics in proclaiming independence. That provoked an armed conflict with the Russian-speaking population in the eastern part of the country and Moscow's intervention on their side. Controlling a tiny sliver of land along the east bank of the Dniester River bordering Ukraine, the rebel leadership announced the formation of the independent state of Transnistria and appealed to the remaining Soviet garrison for protection against Moldovan government forces. A military stalemate was quickly achieved, leaving the government in Tiraspol in charge of their republic. Three decades later, the political divide remains unresolved over the territory with half a million people. Moldova wants the Russian troops removed, and like most of the world, does not recognize Transnistria's independence, while the region's foreign minister said joining the Russian Federation remains the goal. The reason why Russia wants to keep the status quo is simple to see. Having a foothold inside Moldova is imperative to projecting force to the border of NATO member Romania. Losing that foothold would be a major strategic setback. At the time of Moscow's full-scale invasion of Ukraine on February 24, there was concern that the Russian armed forces would roll across southern Ukraine and link up with the garrison in Transnistria. Russia planned to conquer Odessa, the Black Sea port city with one million people. If it had been successful in Odessa, the Kremlin would have achieved two major objectives. One is that the entire north shore of the Black Sea would have been a Russian coastline, creating a stranglehold over the ports that are vital to Ukraine's economy. The second is that the entirety of Moldova would have been placed under effective Russian control. Not being a member of NATO, it would have stood no chance of resisting Russian demands. These events leave major questions over the outlook for Moldova and its Russian-controlled Transnistria region. If Ukraine can regain its occupied territory from Russia in this war, Moldova will be safer from Kremlin aggression. If a Russian military push is unlikely in the foreseeable future, the Kremlin-supported regime in Transnistria would have a strong incentive to come to terms with the legal authorities in Moldova. Being deprived of economic relations with Russia, the criminal and corrupt elites of Tiraspol would need to show greater transparency and accountability with Chisinau to survive. Any such agreement would inevitably entail eviction of the Russian military garrison, with an estimated 1,500 soldiers, including local Transnistrians. A withdrawal would end any Russian hopes of retaining a military foothold west of Ukraine. 
In military terms, Moldova would become integrated with Ukraine and Romania into what may emerge as a new NATO neighborhood. Assuming improvement in the security situation, the EU would have to confront the non-military reasons why Moldova had not been offered candidate status before the war in Ukraine. Moldova is so small that the EU would have little problem absorbing it. But the challenge will be in overcoming the legacies of corrupt governance. A stalemate in the hostilities in Ukraine could happen if the warring sides exhaust each other, Russia would not have the strength to make further territorial gains and Ukraine would be unable to liberate its territory. For the Kremlin, an inconclusive struggle would be a victory, and negotiations for peace would likely entail the easing of Western sanctions. For Moldova, Russian troops would likely be able to stay put in Transnistria, keeping the conflict frozen into its fourth decade. Prospects for integration of Moldova into the EU would worsen considerably. If Transnistria remains an incubator of corruption and organized crime, it will also remain integrated into Russian criminal networks and their offshoots in Hungary and Austria. This will inevitably have a corrosive influence on those institutions in Moldova that need to be brought up to EU standards. On October 6, President Maya Sandu announced that Moldova will host the 2023 summit of the European political community, meaning 44 European leaders will visit the small, often overlooked country next spring. The Moldovan military has increased its capabilities via training with European and US militaries. Moldovan troops are hosting the exercise, Joint Combined Exchange Training 2022, with Romanian and British troops from 10th to October 21st. In addition, a strong partnership with the U.S. North Carolina National Guard continues, and U.S. personnel participated in the multinational exercise Fire Shield 2022 at the military base Bolboka in September. Nevertheless, weapons acquisition programs remain minimal due to a limited defense budget. Energy security is a big problem for Moldova, which relies on Russian gas from Gazprom. Gas has become a political weapon, which Moscow also utilizes to support Moldova's separatist, Russian-friendly Transnistria region. Similarly, Russia tends to turn off the gas pipeline to punish Moldova. Moreover, Russia also restricted Moldovan agricultural imports arguing they had pests and plant diseases. Transnistrian imports were not affected. Recent developments on the ground are hopeful for Ukraine. Kiev says it has seized 6,000 square kilometers of its territory from Russian control this year, yet almost 120,000 square kilometers out of Ukraine's 603,700 square kilometers, roughly 20%, are still in Kremlin hands. Besides moral support from Washington and Brussels, Chisinau needs short-term energy assistance to help the Moldovan population as winter arrives. While not militarily or economically powerful, Moldova has become Ukraine's vital ally, but Chisinau's current policies can only be effective and sustainable if they help the Moldova population. The game is far from over.